What's up everybody, it is Dan Cam, you know, and I am back with another video. And what we're gonna be doing today is building my buddy Justin's beast PC, but everything goes horribly wrong. Bum, bum, bum. So stick around to the end of the video so you can find out what happened and all the issues we ran into. And I think I'm just gonna time lapse the entire build because I really don't want the video to be an hour and a half long. So I'm just gonna speed up all the clips and throw some music over it. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and let's get into the build. All right, so we got all the parts set up and I'm gonna have Justin here go through everything in the list. Walk us through, Justin. So we got two, one terabyte, Western Digital Blue SM550 NVMEs, 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance, uh, 3600 megahertz. Boom. Asus Tough X570. A Ryzen 9 5900X. Yeah. Zotac 3070 Ti. We got a uh, Mesterfy 2 case. Corsair 850 watt uh, power supply. And a 280 millimeter uh, AIO CPU cooler. Boom. And I'm gonna, can you get this graphics card out of the way and. Let's take a look at this case a little better. Take a look at the monstrosity. The massive that beast. That thing is sweet looking though. Oh yeah. And the awesome part about his graphics card is he won it in a shuffle. New Edge shuffle after about, you know, eight months. After like <laughs> eight months of us entering every single day. All right, let's go ahead and let's get into this bad boy. All right, so here's where we're at right now. We got the board in, we got his RAM in, CPUs in, and right now we're putting together the PSU. He's getting all his cables he needs to hook up the PSU. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. We had a little sneak peek of the card over here. Big old 3070 Ti. 
and some ugly connectors that <laughs> Zotac included. I hope no one ever uses these in their build because that is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> that is just I, this is straight up terrible. All right, so taking a little break, we've got pretty much everything set up on the board. His CPU power is good. He's got a, this case actually comes with a fan controller on the back. And then he's got his, all of his front panel connectors. Let's see if I can get a good angle of it. It's kind of blocked by the PCIe. HD audio's in. So the power, the, the board has power, excuse me. So now we're trying to figure out how to mount his 280 Cooler Master radiator in here. Um, but yeah. Let's get to it. Another little update here. So we've got the rad in and we had to get a little creative on where exactly to mount all the screws. Um, but right there it's fitting perfectly. And one thing we we're worried about is clearance between the fans that get mounted to the radiator and the Ram. But we literally have about a millimeter of clearance. So I think we'll be all right. But yeah, pump is in. Next, we're going to have the GPU, all front panel connectors are in, all power is hooked up. Um, other than that... Most important part. What? Oh, oh you're appealing it already? Ooh. Ooh. Look at the camera there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's going to look cool. I wonder how much customization you can do. Oh, I just saw your face in there. <laughs> that means it's shiny. Hey, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's coming along. Almost there. All right, so the time has finally come. 
the build is done. Flip the switch. Turn the monitor on. Definitely flick the power supply switch first. The lights went dim. You've got lights on your board. Well, that's some cool looking, cool ass RGB. And we didn't look at your board, but there's usually indicator lights to make sure that everything's okay. I do see it's just flashing RGB. So I'm not 100% as to what... There's definitely no impact. I don't know why I looked back there. And we got all your front Weird. panel connectors hooked up, so... I think it's time for the power switch. Oh, snap, son! That is beautiful. So you, okay, so you have an orange light on your motherboard. Oh, uh, okay, that's what it is. Let's give it a sec. All right, so we reseated the RAM. We're hoping that's going to resolve our issue because this board says. Oh, orange. Still orange. Let's see if it changes. All right, so we got this thing all built and it looks incredible, but we just found out that Asus boards compatibility with RAM is absolutely stupid. Um, we tried RAM that I had and we searched through their compatibility list for the longest time and we cannot find anything that works properly. So, Unfortunately, he's going to have to return the Corsair Vengeance RAM that he has, and then he's going to have to head to Best Buy, and they have one kit that fits in here. It will work. And he has to go down to 3200 megahertz. so the build came out looking fantastic, but he's getting an orange light on his motherboard, and we can't seem to get it to go away with the RAM that we have, and then talking to Asus support. They told us to check RAM compatibility and we checked their 19 pages and for some reason no RGB RAM is supported on 5000 series um, CPUs with this Asus board. So he's going to try to find some RAM, but unfortunately we are at a stopping point. And... All right, guys. So it's a couple days in the future from when Justin's build was recorded and he took his PC home he went over to Best Buy and he bought the only set of compatible RAM that they had. He installed it and we were still getting the orange light. So after brainstorming for quite a while, we figured out it was most likely a BIOS issue because a lot of these newer motherboards have to be flashed to the newest BIOS in order for them to accept a 5000 series CPU. So you either have to have a 3000 series CPU and you install that, you update the BIOS, you take that CPU out and then you put in your new one, or you use what's called a BIOS flashback, which basically allows you to update the BIOS without having a CPU installed. So you basically input a USB dongle into the back of the motherboard, it'll update the BIOS and then you can install your new CPU. But the Asus Tough motherboard, and I'll link it down below, doesn't have this option for BIOS flashback. You have to go to the Asus Tough Pro in order to flash the BIOS. So if you buy the Asus Tough, you have to have a 3000 series CPU lying around in order to update the BIOS. So luckily for Justin, his brother has a gaming PC and it has a Ryzen 3600 CPU. So he disassembled that one, took that CPU out, put it in his new board, booted it up, the orange light went away, but now we were getting a white light and we weren't getting any video out. So after brainstorming for some time, we ended up using the onboard graphics for the 3600 and then it finally went to post. Um, for some reason, the white light means that you're not getting some kind of video signal. Um, there's something going on with the CPU and the PCIe lane. So. We went into the BIOS and there's options that you have to change in order for it to recognize the top PCIe slot. So we did that. We plugged his video card back in. 
um, his DisplayPort cable, and then it finally booted. So I swear this was probably five to six hours we were trying to figure this out because he built it here and then he took it home and then we were over a Discord call the entire time trying to figure it out. Um, but he finally got it up and running. So we were just extremely thrilled that we got it going and all this diagnosing um, it ended up working out okay. And then I'll go ahead and throw some shots up um, of the finished build, but it came out fantastic. It's a beast build. Um, he's using ultra settings at 1440p and getting very high FPS. So he's happy and I'm happy that we're able to get it resolved. Um, but all the workarounds with this Asus board have been extremely frustrating. And the fact that they don't have a BIOS flashback on this one, or just this could have been avoided and we could have saved a ton of hours by having this feature on the board, but it didn't have it. So it's just kind of a bummer because it seems like all these newer boards, when they say they're 5,000 series CPU ready, they have this feature, but this board unfortunately does not. And you have to spend more money to get the pro just to get the feature. So it's been frustrating, but now that it's running, he's pumped and he's finally gaming at high FPS and no longer gaming at 1080p low with his 1060. So we're both just super happy, but that's going to do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like rating. And if you're enjoying my content, please consider subscribing. Well, I hope you guys all have a great day and I'll see y'all in the next video.